Hello YouTube, this is Frono. Today I'll show you a completely automatic XP bank. This one is built as a free community XP bank in the shopping district on the Hemisphere server where I play. Automatic in this case means that you can chunk load it or build it in your spawn chunks and it doesn't need a player nearby. This is different from most XP banks that run on cactus and need a player to random tick and grow the cactus because this XP bank runs on potatoes and is villager bone meal powered and I use dried kelp blocks to smelt the potatoes. It has a very small visible footprint. Pretty much all of the redstone is hidden underground, which is the way I like it. But first let's give you some context. An XP bank is an array of furnaces where you can take out stuff and get a certain amount of XP so you can mend your tools or gain some XP after you died. Such a build is very useful on the server because it will run in the background and load up all the furnaces if you can chunk load it. So most likely the bank will be full when you return, indicated by all of the lamps being on. This bank here has two types of slicers. The orange ones will give you enough XP to fully mend a netherite pickaxe and the yellow one gives a bit more so you can perhaps mend some armor or repair part of another tool that you hold in the offhand. I don't need a lot of XP, but my elytra could use a bit more durability. And let's mend the pickaxe while we're at it. So all I do is I hold the tool in my hand, go here, take out the potatoes, and I get the XP, everything is fully mended. And then the lamp goes off, indicating that this furnace is not ready. And the furnace will start smelting potatoes fully automatically until the XP are restored. And what happens in the background, these villagers will produce potatoes if required. Here is a kelp block farm that will produce fuel if required. And the whole thing is loaded by a chunk loader, this is Dark's design, which will run until all of the furnaces are filled up again. Now, a lot of you will say that cactus is a better way to gain XP, at least on Java, because it gives one XP per cactus. But there is no way to grow cactus without a player. You can't bone meal it or something. But the next best renewable thing are potatoes, which give a third of an XP. And using villagers and bone meal, you can fully automate their growth. So let's look at the contraption in creative. And a bit of a disclaimer, this is copied from my survival world. So it's built in survival. And I fiddled around quite a bit until everything was working. So the wiring is certainly not optimal. And we have four main components. A bone meal farm. Then a dried kelp block farm to produce the fuel, a villager powered potato module, and of course the smelter itself. And I do have a chunk loader, which is indicated here by the lamp. I had to build it way underground in my survival world to ensure portal linking. So I built it at level y equals zero. You might want to build it somewhere else. But here, if the lamp is on, then your chunk loader should be off. So right now the chunk loader would be running. So let's start with the moss farm. I use Dark's design. It's not as lag efficient as other moss farms like the Chromos farm, but it's unload resistant. So even if you unload the farm forcibly, for example by restarting the server or on single player by closing the world like so, the farm will not produce any cobble. And this farm will run forever and ever, hopefully. Which is a good thing because our server is rebooted daily. Now this is done by the old armor stand trick. We have an armor stand with frostwalker boots and if you reload the chunk these frostwalker boots will create ice which will be detected by this observer here and this pauses the farm just long enough for the lava to set because that's the problem why other moss farms will generate cobble if unloaded. The lava needs 1.5 seconds to set and this is not guaranteed after a server reboot. Not with this farm, this farm will never generate cobble, no matter how often you reload it. Now the bone meal will go into some item filters and these go into crafters, crafting them to bone blocks. And the bone blocks go into a small storage silo here, containing three double chests of bone blocks. Now the bone meal farm isn't quite fast enough to power both the kelp farm and the villagers, but that little silo will bridge the gap for over a day. 
So even if many players come and take out all of the bone meal from all of the slices, this farm will run for over a day and at some point hopefully all of the furnaces will be loaded again or at least we will have only a few furnaces remaining. So most of the time the bone meal farm will produce an excess of bone meal and of course we stop it when the buffer here is full using this somewhat clumsy wiring. And here we have the villagers set up. They stand on a farmland block planting potatoes and we have dispensers permanently bone mealing these potatoes. So depending on the time of day you know that villagers are lazy and work only on certain hours. The villagers will harvest the potatoes and immediately replant them and the dispensers will immediately regrow the crops to mature state. Each villager gives around 500 potatoes per hour. Here I have nine villagers which will generate enough potatoes for about half of the blast furnaces. I could use more villagers to power all of the furnaces at the same time. But in the end this is not really necessary. Ever since building the bank on my server I've never seen all slices empty so usually we'll just have to smelt a small number of slices and if indeed all 15 slices would be empty then it would just take a bit more time until the last ones are filled. And if this really becomes a problem I can always add more villagers of course. Of course we will produce potatoes only if we need them. This comparator here reads the last hopper in the hopper chain and if this one is full enough then we will stop the potato production using some more clumsy wiring. So the villager module will run only if I actually need potatoes. And the next component is the dried cat block farm, which I presented in a previous video, so I'll be very brief here. The cat generator is bone meal powered and a variant of Ilmangus cat farm. It gives 7200 cat per hour, exactly enough for 10 furnaces. Don't ask me why I use 11, counting is hard. Then the kelp is smelted and auto crafted into dried cat blocks. The dried cat blocks are transported here in a hopper line over the furnaces, so these furnaces are supplied first and the surplus goes into a water stream, into a dropper elevator, going up to the smelter and we have a similar dropper elevator for the potatoes and again we have a hopper here that we read and if this hopper is full enough then we will disable the kelp farm using some more clumsy wiring. And the last component is the XP bank itself which is roughly based on an old El Mango design and I'll be again very brief because I have made a recent video about that one as well. So you can look that up if you want the details. The cliff notes is as with all XP banks we fill up a few containers with baked potatoes and once the player takes out baked potatoes we get a redstone signal here and what happens is that we first empty all of these containers. So this dropper will drop the potatoes into the fire until all of the containers are empty and then we will fill them again by smelting and this will produce a certain amount of XP. The precise amount of XP can be roughly calculated by the number of potatoes times 0.35 and if you do the math then you'll find that the orange slices that have a barrel here will contain roughly 1050 XP while the yellow slices with a double chest in here have about 1650 XP. So this is enough for a netherite pick to be fully repaired and the yellow slices have about 50% more. Now there is a slight change in the XP bank so I move the components a bit around to be able to have these redstone torches here and these redstone torches are basically an ore gate that will give me a signal here if any of the furnaces is smelting and that means if I have a signal here, if any one of the furnaces is active, I will activate the chunk loader. So this contraption will keep running. Now let's talk about the chunk loader here. And this is basically an OR gate. So this chunk loader will be on if either the bone meal farm is running, in which case I will have a signal here, or the cat farm is running, in which case I will have a redstone signal here, or one of the furnaces is smelting, in which case I will have a signal here from this line. I do not, did not connect the villagers to the chunk loading. I could have rigged a redstone signal in the gap here. 
It would probably be sufficient to use only two inputs from the bone meal farm, because if our silo was low, then we certainly want to fill it up, which doesn't take a long time. And more importantly, we want to have the chunk loader running whenever one of the furnaces are smelting. In the end, if none of the furnaces are smelting, then the fuel farm and the villager farm will quickly fill up the storages. So we don't really need a signal from that, and that input here is kind of optional. So let's go back to the server. Now, if you build this, the important part is the, that the MOS farm is chunk aligned. That means the MOS farm must be within one chunk. Now the chunk loader is under here. And if the chunk loader is running, then it will also load these chunks. So we don't have an issue with the bone meal transport here. Or with the potato and the dried kelp block transport. But this MOS farm has to be within one chunk. Otherwise, the player might partially load it by walking into the shopping district. This could lead to cobblestone or worse. So build it within one chunk. Now I said the server is restarted twice a day. Now to restart this, after a server restart, we use again the armor stand trick. So this is our chunk loader. But you see I also have a dropper throwing items in here. And we will throw one item in here after each restart. And here we have a chunk loader chain. And this chunk loader chain is terminated here, which is our world spawn. And this is where the chunk loader chain ends. This is inside the spawn chunks. This armor stand, again with thrust rocker boots, will be loaded whenever the server is started up. So we get an observer signal here. We throw an item in and return that item. And this starts the chunk loader chain to my XP bank, but also going to our mob switches. So we can automatically turn on another mob switch after the server is restarted. And that's all there is to it. So for the yellow slices, it takes about seven hours to fill up. For the orange slices, about four hours. So we can come here and take out the potatoes several times a day and mend our tools or get some XP after we died and we may need to enchant some stuff. The bank is centrally located in our shopping district. I will just have to add some decoration now that the redstone is fixed, but it's working like a charm. Thanks for watching. Leave a like if you want to see more content like this. Please subscribe so that you don't miss any of my videos and see you next time. Bye bye.